Can you believe it? We're already to podcast number 34. Whenever it has this, this 3x minus pi, the first thing you need to do is factor out 3. Now you can't factor it out to the front of cosine, but you can just factor it out right here. So I'm going to do that part first. y equals a 5 plus 2 cosine. And then I'm going to factor out a 3. And what does it leave? Well, if you had something like 3x minus 6, so we're talking algebra 1 right now, and then you factor out a 3. So when you factor out a 3, this 3 gets brought out in front, so that means this is just x. Then what number goes right here? Well, there's two ways I know of to figure out that. One is 3 times negative what gives you negative 6. And then you could go, um, third grade, Miss Alves said 3 times 2 is 6. So this is a 2. 3 times 2 is 6. There you go. Another way to look at it is when you factor out a 3, basically you're dividing out a 3 and you're dividing out a 3. So you've taken out a 3, so that divides 3, which reduces this to just be x. And then this reduces to be 2. And so you get the same thing. Whether you do it by multiplication or you do it by division, you'll still end up with x minus 2. Now when dealing with this, we really need to do it this way. Divide by a 3. So factored out the 3, so that means this is just x. And then this, you need to divide by 3. And of course, you could always check and see if that's right, because if you multiply, that would be 3x. And if you multiply to this one, the 3s would cancel, and it would just give you that minus pi. Okay, that was the first part. The next part is write down the x information and the y information or the x-axis and the y-axis. First of all, there's period. Now for the graph of cosine, its period is 2 pi. But because of this 3 right here, you need to divide by 3. Next, the phase shift. So that's this number right here. When it says subtract, it actually moves it to the right. If this would have said plus pi over 3, that would actually move it to the left. With a minus, it moves it to the right. Then for the amplitude. So that comes from this number right here. That's a 2. And then finally, the vertical shift. That's this 5 right here, which you could just leave as a positive 5, or you could emphasize 5 up. Now, start with the period. So, just because of that, that means it's going to take from 0 to 2 pi over 3 to draw the graph. Next, do the phase shift. So these numbers need to be shifted to the right. So this one, you have to shift it to the right or add pi over 3. And this one, you have to shift it to the right or add pi over 3. Now there's a slightly different way you could do this part. So I'm going to do that over here on the left. So for number one, you could go, we're talking about the x-axis. And the period is pi over 3. So that means x has to range between 0 and 2 pi over 3. And then get a red pen and shift it to the right. So add pi over 3 and add pi over 3. So that means that x is sandwiched between pi over 3 on the left 
and 2 pi over 3 plus 1 more is 3 pi over 3, or pi on the right. So you could do it that way, or you could do it this way. So once you add pi over 3, that's going to be 0 plus pi over 3 is pi over 3. And for this one, 2 pi over 3 plus a pi over 3, that's pi. Okay, that's the x-axis information. Then for the y-axis information, so you could say the y's, because the amplitude is 2, that means it's going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. So it ranges between negative 2 and positive 2 from the amplitude. The vertical shift means go up by 5. So add 5 and add 5. So sometimes I prefer to do it this way because otherwise I start drawing it and then I have to shift them over and I have to draw it again. And then I put the y-axis and then I shift them up and then I have to draw it a third time. So this saves me some time. So 5 minus 2 is usually 3. And 5 plus 2, they tell me that that's 7. So the y values go from 3 to 7. So let me just extend this a little, 3 to 7. And then what's in the middle of 3 and 7? Well, if you average them, you'll get the middle number. So average would be add them together and divide by 2. So this is 10 divided by 2, or in other words, 5. And that, and that is this number right here. So whatever that is, that's going to be this middle number, 5. So then I'm going to draw the box. So as far as the x is, it goes between this number and this number. As far as the y's, it goes between 3 and 7 with 5 in the middle. And then right in the middle right here, well, this is 3 pi over 3, and this is 1 pi over 3. So in the middle is 2 pi over 3. Okay, now we're ready. So this says graph positive cosine. So the positive cosine graph starts at the top, goes down to the lowest point at the middle, and then goes back up to the top. And that should do it. Of course, we should ask our little friend, the graphing calculator, what they think. Oh, that's supposed to be a 2. 5 plus 2 cosine and then 3x minus pi. Whenever you go to check your answer, always graph the original problem the way that it was given. Not this, because if I made a mistake right there, I would be graphing my mistake instead of graphing the original problem. So graph the original. And now I need to set up the window to be just like this. Window. So x should go from pi over 3 to pi. And then these down here are going by pi over 3. The y values go from 3 at the bottom to 7 at the top. And then it should graph one cosine just like this because we're looking only in this red window right here. And that did it.